Good morning, YouTube. Shmi's here. Yay. Shmi 150, <laughs> like one of the founding fathers of car YouTube. The route Rushmore would have his face on it for YouTubers. You're like granddad. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's kind it of feels offensive, like but... it. No, no, I'll accept it. It's been nearly 15 years of car YouTube for me. Right. So Tim is passing through on one of his many epic adventures in Kansas. You came here a few years ago, and I'm glad you're here because I need your help. Sure. I'm hoping to get some help because April, <laughs> she doesn't want to admit to being a YouTuber. It's like uh, it's like a dirty word. Are you embarrassed to be a YouTuber for after 15 years? No, of course not. But what's really interesting is when I would say I became a full-time YouTuber was 2014. Hmm. At the time, nobody even knew what that was. Right. That term didn't exist. But it's become so normal now. Well, it's and now normal. it's weird because people are like, oh, you're podcasters. Like, they'll call us podcasters. And so we've kind of jumped ship from calling it YouTube and calling us podcasters now. It's kind of like a bit of everything. But no, there's nothing wrong with being a YouTuber. It's become a, a career. It's become an understood right. career, I think. Well, now it's, it's respectful. But, uh, you know, when I was telling Tyler and back in the day, you know, doing TV and broadcasting, you have to be perfect and get your words out exactly how you're going to say them. And you have one shot to do it where... I was watching YouTubers and you guys were like jump cutting every single well, he word. He hates jump cuts though. She okay. is the exception. I really hate jump cuts. <laughs> I try and avoid it entirely. If we can have a clean kind of one take conversation, right. that's the goal. Well, so that's a special different kind of talent. Like you really have to know what you're talking about. He's good at it, but right. I've seen him have a bad day where sometimes <laughs> oh, no. it doesn't get, you know, Getting the intro down, getting it all in, and, and the Shmi meltdowns are wonderful. To people witness. never see this. This doesn't happen. Wait, right? so you never post like bloopers or anything? I have actually done a little bit in the past, mm -hmm. but not not really. It's kind of the the clean presentation because that's yeah. the start of the channel, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Any YouTuber has their their consistent style, their format, their right. type of video, and so mine is always very factual, very accurate. You know, if I say the wrong thing, right. I'm filming it again. Right. I'm so, not letting that out. But like, so when Tyler kind of fumbles, there would be lots of colorful words flying around <laughs> no. and hitting himself in the face. <laughs> no, what yeah. are you talking about? Oh, all the time. Are you like, like when you mess up, like what's your reaction? Do you just start over? No, it's not so colorful. It would normally just be kind of looking down at the ground and being yeah. like, Ugh. Okay, and so you don't again. literally yeah. physically hurt yourself like Tyler does. <laughs> I, I do like hit myself in the face. I'm sure Jake <laughs> has a few clips of it where I just start hitting myself because I get frustrated. And I, I, whatever, I just punish my, I, I'm weird, but as you know. But it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of normal because when you're shooting a video, you know, obviously this is one of the differences between the television and the more traditional mm -hmm. world is when you're certainly starting out as a YouTuber, you are the director, the cameraman, yeah. the lighting, mm -hmm. the presenter, the script writer. And you're everything. doing it for nothing initially. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So like April's used for the phone to ring to right. do a job, right. a, a paid gig or whatever. Yeah. I said, hey, just come back in my back condo. Let's build a set <laughs> and, and, and start <laughs> filming things for nothing. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's uh, that's been the last six months of... April, she's she's slowly embracing it, I right. feel well, like. What do you, but, like, uh, you're from London. Do people think of Kansas as this kind of like honky-tonk, weird, middle-of-nowhere place? She just moved place? here from Chicago. I just moved okay. here from Chicago. What do people from Europe think about Kansas? <laughs> do they think anything about it? I think generally the U.S. wouldn't break so much state by state. Yeah. But more we would look kind of at the middle and not really know very much about what happens. I mean, I'm spoiled because I've driven coast to coast across the country. Right three, four, five times. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously seen so much, been here three years ago, as you said. Um, I guess probably not much of an idea. Yeah. You, you just kind of assume lots of space, right. mm -hmm. lots of slowness, not certainly not the <laughs> Chicago lifestyle. Did you say slowness? Slowness, just, right. you know, I'm going to go <laughs> not, with that. Not very many teeth. Right. You know, like, yeah, like, uh, right. But, but so, okay, I'm being can diplomatic. You, can you like tell me for real, because we hear about this a lot, do European people look down on Americans? Like, we're not as cool or sophisticated or fancy. He did just uh, correct my pronunciation of my Ferrari color. I said Venusia, which is the Venusia. purple for the 599. Yeah. yeah. Like, Venus, how's it? Venatia. Venatia. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, do you look down on Americans? Because you're I like, think, you're not. I think the internet and a lot of social media doesn't help. Okay. Because we see a lot of videos posted of asking very simple questions and getting very useless answers. Oh, right. Mm. That's certainly like a, mm. a trend, a thing. Um, it doesn't help. I guess it depends a bit where, right. a bit what. But True. This is all playing into a stereotype, right? Isn't right. It? Yes. That's the type of mm -hmm. just content these days. Well, I, I think Shmi is sort of a shining example of just discipline when it comes to YouTube and that consistency. <laughs> and 
I just don't know after 15 years, like so many people have come, have risen, maybe passed you and burned out and all this. You have been a very steady yeah. <laughs> force. It's very consistent. Like I think of all the other YouTubers I used to watch from 10 plus years ago, you're all the, you're like last man standing for a lot of them. I think when you've been doing it this long, right, you'll never be the fresh face. You're never going to be the new kid on the block. So you won't be like a viral sensation that people have a subconscious feeling that they've never seen you before. Because, I mean, I've done so many videos. If you add up all the views, it's billions, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there's a familiarity that viewers have with you. But I think the consistency and the story has been there throughout from the beginning. I've uploaded on YouTube over 5,000 videos wow. now. Wow. And how have you That's, not burned out? I, I don't actually know. I, I, <laughs> a lot of people ask me, I think it's because I love being around cars. Mm -hmm. I love the travel that I do. And I really enjoy the social media side. Mm -hmm. Like the, it sounds quite boring in a way, but understanding the analytics and right. views and the numbers and mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't work. And almost the means of using videos and cars as a way to try and grow a business. Mm -hmm. Because I find that quite exciting. It's been such a, like a, if you think back to that time, it, it just didn't exist. So mm -hmm. going through those motions of explaining to car companies what it meant to make a video to stick on the internet, it was a concept that was completely alien. Right. Sure, they would shoot with magazines, they would shoot with newspapers, right. they would shoot with the TV shows, you know, Top Gear and that kind of thing. But to try and explain, hey, I'm just a one-man band without mm -hmm. a camera crew and I'm just turning up with a handy cam, can I make a video, please? Right. Mm -hmm. Has been so exciting. And there's always evolutions of that, right? It's changing constantly. Like do, you ever, a... do you ever feel competitive with other YouTubers? Like if someone puts out just like a banger Conus Egg video, you're like, oh, I got to follow suit and, and kind of one up them. Because you're all the same press launches too, like covering so the same things, right? There's 100% been a change of this industry mm. in the sense that for me, it's still like the old school mentality of we're all friends and collaborating right. with each other is absolutely the key. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's super cool, especially for audiences when they see like two different worlds colliding. Right. Mm -hmm. You get those uh, like amazing responses when it happens. Right. For sure on the manufacturer events, when you have, let's say 20 or even 30 videos that right. drop at the same embargo time of the same car in the same location, probably at the same specification, oh, yeah. that can become overkill because mm -hmm. you even get that feedback from the viewers. Right. You know, the viewers are like, oh, it's the embargo drop day. Right. My newsfeed or you know, front page is filled with a million of the same things. Right. Mm. Um, so there's certainly you know, a competitive element, but at the end of the day, as a car guy, mm -hmm. like if somebody uploads an amazing new Koenigsegg video, I'm the first one to try and watch it. Right. If I can find a moment to, to, to tune in, right? Who's because... your favorite car guy YouTuber? Oh. Like, who's the best at it, do you think? Oh, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> Besides I, Tyler. He hasn't watched it in years, probably. <laughs> yeah, I can't... No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, who's... who's the... You can't be the best. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you can have the amazing storytelling of Matt Armstrong mm -hmm. in the UK. You know, he's risen hugely in recent years because right. he makes mm -hmm. brilliant videos. Like, the way it's put together and the story and the way it grows through the content and mm -hmm. keeps you hooked at what's happening. You have, I think, more the style that we both do, which is more the kind of raw, uh, you turn on the camera and you film something and you're sharing mm -hmm. a bit about your life or your experience or your car or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Then you have the videos that Haggerty make these days of reviewing cars. Right. Right. And the stories are just brilliantly shot, created, mm -hmm. like bringing the, the television world to YouTube. Right. right? That's right. probably the biggest thing that's changed. If you go back to say when you began, right, everything on YouTube at that time was literally one man bands with a camera. It right. Was yeah. So no he was 2016, corporate. so eight years ago, like half of how long he's been doing it. But yeah, <laughs> it was all mm -hmm. it was all super like easy going, go with the flow type mm -hmm. stuff. So yes, for sure, there's competition in terms of the commercial element, right? Like the sponsors and brands you work with, because at the end of the day, they're not working with everybody. Mm -hmm. They're going to pick who they work with. Right. So you are a competing platform like that. But so many of the people that I shoot with, whether it's coming to visit you, whether mm -hmm. it's going to visit James the Stradman, whether mm -hmm. it's well, so many people from our world, Freddie, Ed, etc. It's it's like they're good friends. You know, it's you're meeting up with your friends, and if you can set something up for each other, right. it's even better. Right. And I feel like one other way that sort of sets you apart is you tend to avoid the low hanging fruit of like clickbait, <laughs> and uh, sometimes, you know, like, <laughs> like I mean, for the most part, and you know, the, there's one way to do it where the drama feeds the views and having all these confrontations and and you know breaking things on purpose and it, you know there, it's there's one way to do it, but I think 
I, obviously, you avoid that in your videos. It's much more of a positive, sort yeah. of fun kind of... I'm not saying the other way is wrong, but it's... No, there's, there's no right or wrong, is there? It's, everything's kind of unique. The way everyone mm -hmm. does it is unique. For me, it's about providing information, you know, being very informative about the car, about what's gone into making it. It's educational, but very much about the positivity of cars, the passion that everybody who loves these things has in common, and trying to almost kind of use that to inspire people, to share something new, to give them an insight into what it's all about. Like, what, what is it like to go on a road trip with a Ford GT? Mm -hmm. As crazy it is, as it is, like, what, what's that act, what actually happens? Like, what, what goes on in the videos is what we do. And that's what you're doing right now, a road Literally. trip with your Ford GT, which is yeah. absolutely beautiful. And you were telling <laughs> me you. only 12 Europeans were able to well, get 12 one. 12 UK cars. Okay, 12 for, UK for cars. cars which, mm. For a market as big as the UK is, right. you know, roughly 10% of supercars come mm -hmm. to the United Kingdom, was a very small allocation run, so getting it was a super special thing. Right. Um, it was out here in the United States in 2019, so this is kind of like a rerun five years later, because it's, talking about the longevity of it, everything's different now, you know, mm -hmm. what, what I would film five years ago has changed now. Right. But also, what I think's kind of interesting about making videos on YouTube is that people don't really remember what happened five years ago. True. You know, right. It's a very short attention span. Mm -hmm. People don't remember what happened a week ago sometimes right. now. So it's it's an opportunity almost to kind of rerun my own positive memories, but create some new ones at the same time. Right. Every town you go through, are people just like <laughs> swarming around the 4GT, like taking you pictures? You would not believe how many, certainly I can't believe how many phones get picked up by right. drivers to take photos. Um, that's something I think that happens much more here than in certainly around oh, Europe. Oh, that doesn't happen. Oh, because they're too Not cool. Because the they're so fancy. No, no, it's they're because like, oh. we're more likely to get <laughs> caught by a camera or something oh. that's going to send us a fine through the mail. Okay, oh. that's true. <laughs> It's been weird recently with the Cybertruck, people freaking out. It's like, but it's, it's, it's just a stupid truck, you know? It's a I, metal I see box. A, right, I see Ford GT and freak out, but the, the Cybertruck's <laughs> been a, a weird Cyber one recently. Truck. As far as, like, all your collection, you had to whittle it down to one to live with for the rest of your life, you know? It, would it be the Ford GT, or do you think? If you could, if you had to use that as your only car mm -hmm. for, like, practical things in life, that wouldn't work so well. <laughs> no. There's no trunk. Right. There's no... There's no easy usability but as a car it's it's the most personal car for me mm. like the most significant story behind it and like what i've right. done with it and memories and that kind of thing um you know i'm super spoiled to own a number of cars like yourself and each car offers you a different experience and that's one of the like amazing things i love sharing through a video is that certainly in england where we have our tiny little countryside lanes you know those cliche mm -hmm. poster mm -hmm. pictures and postcards that you see of an english countryside village it's beautiful that's where you want a tiny little small sports car. Right. You don't want something like a right. Ford GT, which is you, enormous. You say people don't have a long memory, but I remember it really well because, it, like you think 20 years ago, Top Gear, Clarkson specking his 05 Ford GT, yeah. and you remember that, and you remember the immobilizer breaking and it had yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember but you going we... through to the event. I remember you going through and specking it and you getting, I think, the little suitcase with the different yep. mock-ups and everything. I remember every part of it because it was like, this is an influencer, just like a, a YouTuber just is getting access to all this. And to be able to do it, it was just so mind blowing. I, it was, it, it's imprinted in my head forever, at least. I think that was a really cool time. You know, pe people sometimes ask me what was my favorite period of YouTube. And for me, that was definitely like 2018, 19, because it was still the old YouTube, like the name YouTube, right? It was, mm -hmm. it was you sharing a video, whether that was to upload something to send it to your family or your friends or whatever it was. But it had become, I'm going to say, commercialized enough that people like us who had been doing it for a while were able to have turned it into a business, might have had a small team running, and it was able to kind of monetize and run itself. But it hadn't yet become anything like as corporate as it is now. So you mm -hmm. didn't have those background worries, and it hadn't grown too big that you had so many employees on the payroll just to run your uploads that all mm -hmm. of a sudden there was a stress element involved. It was still like, just go for it. And there was so much also to do with the car world specifically that things like sharing the experience of specking a Ford GT, mm -hmm. the general, I'm going to say general public, but the general customer of a car like that wasn't yet up for posting that type of thing. Right. right? Six years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. people were still a little bit wary of what all of this was, where social media going, mm -hmm. whereas now, find me a Ford GT owner who doesn't share it on their Instagram page. Right. Exactly. Right? That's, yeah. become, that's become normal, whether it's because they want to show off what they've got, whether mm -hmm. it's because they just genuinely want to inspire somebody or to be able to just share it. Right. No. Nowadays, that's, normal whereas at that time i was one of the very few people who was 
doing something like that. Well, and it's you have a, such an intimate look with, you know, you're shooting so much stuff on your phone and it's a more personal feel, like you were saying. Well, the phone's new. Someone. The phone is quite new. Yeah. I've I actually got all the cameras I've ever you, used. You have like a crick in your arm. I wonder if it'll be a YouTuber thing where like this <laughs> this becomes locked. It's like YouTuber arm where it's, you know, we're in the, we're in the retirement home and <laughs> it's, like, it's, carrying, it's stuck. One arm is yeah. just carrying right. this, like, this weight around right. all the time. Now, I do have a question about, you know, this EV craze that's kind of sweeping across America. Is it that same feeling in Europe and in the UK where, you know, you have to be fully electric by a certain date and everyone's kind of converting to that? I think this is a very big, very complex topic. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously become a very political topic yeah. as well, which is slightly detracting from the whole point of it in the mm -hmm. first place. A lot of... I think one of the problems is when you when you understand a lot more of the industry and you know so many more of the things that are happening behind the scenes mm -hmm. and what's coming in the future, you have a very different perspective to what the media en masse shows to the public, right. right, in terms of explaining it. So it's become this polarizing, you love it, you have, you know, people who are madly obsessed with their Teslas and will, like, not want to talk to you if you're not part of the same club. And right. then there are plenty of people who just won't touch it for right. anything. And that's kind of missed the point because governments generally, talking globally, mm -hmm. have said, right, the whole world has to change to EV. Right. But the reality is that doesn't work for the whole world. Right. You know, like I've filmed videos in Egypt and Peru. Like, do you see those being fully electric in mm -hmm. not very long? Right. No, it's not, it's not realistic. EVs are still very much a luxury, you know, mm -hmm. good at the end of the day. A Cybertruck is $100,000, right? right. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really expensive car. Mm -hmm. It's not a car for, like, each and every person right. well, at this I'm stage. I'm thinking through your garage and you haven't really gone hypercar all that much because you could have gone P1 and you went Senna. I'm, I'm trying to think of... Timing. I, I like purchasing a car that I could order from you. So mm -hmm. I, I love the whole experience, partly because mm -hmm. of the journey of the videos, but partly personally, I love knowing the entire history of a car. Uh, yes. No surprises. Well, <laughs> like we know the history of your yeah. Senna. It's had a few... Uh, Incidents, so one one little one little script <laughs> we're gonna say. But right. You know what I mean? Like I know mm -hmm. the service history of everything. Like my SLS Black series, when I bought it, something was misbehaving and effectively ended up doing half an engine rebuild of it. Because mm. I don't know what happened to it earlier in its life. Sounds a lot um, smarter than what I do. Yeah, with the, <laughs> the worst of the oh, worst and seeing not, what not happens. All the way but if you uh, look at what the depreciation does. <laughs> oh, not on the Ford GT. There's some. It, it balances that, out. I imagine that's probably one that's okay. The SLS mm -hmm. is also okay to right. be honest, but the the Senna wasn't pretty. Um, <laughs> some of the others haven't been. But it's interesting with the electric cars, like you're talking about, mm -hmm. and how. Top Gear 20 years ago with Ford GT, like they, they do a review on a car and if it was good or bad, that would make or break the car. And now yeah. it's it's YouTubers mm -hmm. making videos, making or breaking companies. Uh, you know, you did with the bit with SSC2 Atara, uh, more recently like uh, Marquez Brownlee with the, with the Fisker that. Ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tank That's them. A big topic. Tank them. It's, it, is, it is interesting. I think you learn as you go that you have in a way that kind of influence and you have to be very delicate with what you do and make sure you understand your facts and figures and in your like what you're saying mm -hmm. um and i you know i'm not saying that anything anybody's done is is right or wrong because it's not like that but certainly i'm not you know if, if i'm let's say not particularly pleased with a brand you can't overreact yes you can tell a truthful situation mm -hmm. you can explain it but often you know if you're not the biggest fan of something it's, it's normally emotive it's normally like something you get mm -hmm. upset about for whatever reason you have to kind of calm that down, weigh it in, work out you know, pros and cons and, and be quite balanced about it. My, my channels have always been more, like generally when I'm talking about a car, it's the information about the car mm -hmm. to almost guide the viewer through what their experience would be like if they're there in my shoes. Like what, what do you feel? What happens when you change this? What happens when you change that setting? Rather than trying to be too much of a personal opinion. Look how much this sucks. <laughs> the yeah. right? Let yeah. them make their own For sure, if I'm yeah. in a car that I don't particularly like, and you know, I've had one or two cars I haven't particularly liked, and mm -hmm. I'd normally say so, and always would. And I guess for me, one thing that I'm really spoilt is that pretty much every car I film is great because mm -hmm. I'm filming new supercars. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, right. if, you, if, you, if you jump out of like a Pagani and you say this is rubbish, <laughs> well, you're just lying. Because <laughs> right. at the end of the day, it's epic. Right. <laughs> well, you're good at throwing specs out and in a little personal information sometimes too. I need you to fill me in if there's anything I'm missing about Tyler. Um, 
I've moved recently moved to Kansas. Oh, she asked you, Doug about my quirks and features. Do you approve? Like, tell me, features. tell me about. Yeah. You've known Tyler <laughs> longer than I have. Is he a good guy? I think so. You think so? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fifty-fifty right now. Well, on the same turn, April, look how much responsibility he thinks. How much he thinks through YouTubing. How True. much esteem that he holds it. Yes. Can we just finally just say it? We just find right now, I'm going to say it. Yeah, I'm I'm a YouTuber and I'm proud to be a YouTuber. I am April Rose. Should I say it? Yeah. Really? And I'm like... Close, I, close enough. Thank I'm, you so much for watching. Shmi, thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>